What is going on, everyone? You know, again, I've got another gift for you. You're welcome. Happy New Year. I have another guest for you on today's Be More, or I'm super excited. We are all about trying to be better, smarter, wiser, just all the urge when it comes to video and live stream. I am super excited. Her name is Tamika Briscoe. I am going to introduce her after this. So why don't you come be more herb with both of us? Close the doors, walk across the corridor. We got something to show you. Media is our record. Okay, you don't need to hear me talk the entire time. I'm just going to go ahead and get to it. Tamika Briscoe, are you in the house? I'm in the house. I am in the house. So happy to be here. Thank you. Woohoo! Absolutely, Tamika Briscoe. I am so excited to, to have you on today because you are actually coming to us from the world of writing and the world of television and producing and all of that. So what I want you to do is introduce yourself to the Be More Er audience and we'll get started with our conversation. Go ahead. Sure. Hi, everyone. I'm so happy to be here. Um, my name is Tamika Briscoe, and I'm a screenwriter. I'm an independent filmmaker. I'm a director, and I'm based in Los Angeles. Um, I'm originally from Washington, D.C., and yeah, I, I'm so happy to be here. And you rep D.C. all day long. Anytime mm -hmm. I'm in a room with you, there's never a time we don't know that you're from D.C., Absolutely. which is... Uh, Great, because I spent nine years in D.C., so I understand the magic. Yes, yes, yes. yes I'm a Howard alum. <laughs> H.U., yes. you, you know. Yes. No, exactly. <laughs> Y'all so make sure the I, world does. <laughs> you don't know and it could be we could be talking about bread i'm like yeah we, we had bread at howard university we'll tell exactly. everybody who will Everyone. listen as you <laughs> should it's illustrious it's the real hu it's all that so i well, get thank it. you i'm glad you recognize hampton I'm from dc so uh, yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah that's go. virginia that's different that's separate yeah, they're good too. So DC, but that's the real HBCU. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, we love all HBCU. We do, we do. I went to Bowie State University, so I went to. Oh, HBCU I didn't too. know right you went to Bowie. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. Wow, we have that's so much HBCU. in common. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Bowie is a wonderful HBCU. In fact, when I was defending my dissertation, my outside examiner was a professor at Bowie State. So, wow. um, and so a lot yeah. of us taught. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Wow, so, Absolutely. Wow. Bowie is a, I mean, the, the DC, Maryland, Virginia area just has some wonderful colleges, particularly yes. the HBCUs. So For sure. I, yes, For there sure. we go. HBCU sister. Go. Yay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so because I understand how special the DC, Maryland, Virginia area yeah. is, talk to me about how that had a role in shaping you for what you do today in terms of the screenwriting and everything else. Absolutely. That's a great question because as you know, I'm so proud of my hometown. So it's so cool to be from DC. Like it is the nation's capital. It is more importantly, chocolate city or it was, but that's another issue. Um, but um, I'm <laughs> right. so proud <laughs> to be, to be from a place where I could look to my left and I can look to my right and just see people who look like me, you know, like I lived in other places and it, there's just nothing like DC. So um, being an artist, being a writer in particular, um, it just brought so much to my storytelling because I am a black woman screenwriter and director. And for the longest time, I thought that that would be something that didn't identify me. I just thought because of the kind of TV that I like growing up and the reason that I wanted to be a screenwriter, it was from watching shows like Melrose Place and 90210 and soap operas like The Bold and the Beautiful. So I thought I would write that kind of diverse uh, or, or quite frankly, like mostly white stories because I do believe I could. Um, I believe all black writers can write for the world that they grew up seeing. But as I really started to write, um, my stories are so black and, and I'm so proud of it and I lean into it, but it all came from my upbringing in, in Chocolate City. Well, let's talk about uh, your stories being so black. There is a yeah. wonderful project, which, by the way, mm -hmm. I think I told you that I sat and binge watched the entire first season. And let me tell wow. you, that's a testament to your writing, because mm -hmm. I don't sit and watch rubbish. <laughs> so, right. True. I, I, I don't. Point. 
Thank so you. the fact that it, I was that drawn in is a testament to the creativity and the writing. And well, Thank before you. I you know, spill beans about it, tell us about mm -hmm. this project called QT. Is it QT or yes. the QT? No, QT is perfect. QT. Yep. Okay. QT. Okay. Go ahead. Tell us about it. Okay. So QT, um, it's really, uh, it's something that I deliberately left open to the imagination um, because it can, it was born during uh, the pandemic. So we filmed the whole show remotely. So we leaned into that. So you'll see people on FaceTime, you'll see people on Zoom, you'll see exactly what it was like when we were not able to, to be out in the streets. Like, you know, we really aren't completely back, but you know, where it, it's way better than it was in 2020 when we first came up with QT. Um, so, um, and it's about dating during a pandemic. So QT is a play on quarantine or quality time because when you're forced to have conversations, unlike, you know, prior to 2020, you know, which is a very quick hookup culture. Like, you know, yes, you, you were concerned with STDs, but that was about the biggest thing you had to worry about or, or you know, someone's mental health, obviously. But um, now you got to factor in those things and COVID. So um, uh, quality time uh, was something that, was reintroduced to the dating game because you had to actually talk again. So that's when we came up with QT. Um, so it's about millennials just living in Los Angeles and, and dating and connecting at a time when it was very difficult to connect because everything had to be done virtually. So we filmed the show remotely um, using our iPhones, using um, Zoom and technology to piece together a scripted dramatic series but we did it remotely and we are a team of mostly black people. So that was really cool. Wow. And how did you do the research for this? And I'm particularly interested not to make it about me, but my <laughs> dissertation was mm -hmm. on black people and internet dating. So this Ooh. is what drew me to the series right away. How did you do the research for this? Oh my gosh. Well, part of the research is my life. Like, Oh my gosh. Like, oh, wow. Yeah, I've done I've done it all. I've done uh, you know, I've met Mr. Wrong at a bar, I've met Mr. Wrong on an app, you know. It's <laughs> <laughs> so it's very easy to it's very easy to just draw from personal experiences and um, you know, just really a lot of it honestly just relied on personal experiences and imagination. Um and I don't think it really took much research, uh, so to speak, for this project in particular, because I was telling a story that was very familiar to me, or I at least kind of drew from some of my personality uh, traits and attributes that I would be looking for in a male. Um, and yeah, and kind of drew from that, like, uh, for instance, how men prepare for dates and how women prepare for dates, be it online or be it in person, like, you know, we tend to get very just into it and, you know, we want to make sure everything's perfect while they, on the other hand, may or may not like put forth that much effort. <laughs> Absolutely. I remember uh, the t uh, two of the characters, two of the main characters, mm -hmm. when they were getting ready to do the virtual date, yeah. she put a lot of effort into getting ready and making sure she just looked so, mm -hmm. looked just so. And I remember he had on shorts. <laughs> he did. And he threw in a shirt. Yeah, he didn't shower. Yeah. The shirt wasn't even clean. He just threw it on, especially because it was virtual. For him, it wasn't that big of a deal. But for her, you thought she was getting ready for a real date, right? That's what I wanted it to feel like. Like she was about to go out for a night on the town. <laughs> and that's interesting. I wonder if you found that as a difference between men and women in real life in general, when it yeah. comes to quote, quarantine dating or dating during the pandemic, did you oh, yeah. find or hear about women would put oh, absolutely. forth more effort? Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, for sure. Um, that was, that's the cool part about doing a series because we're releasing episodes every week. So you get immediate feedback and people really identify with that. They're like, oh my gosh, that's exactly how it is. Like, you know, women, like we just go above and beyond. We want to impress. And men, not that they don't want to impress, but maybe they don't think of those in intricate details in order to impress. Like they just feel like I'm going to show up, be myself, be charming or whatever that is, but not, we just, we just show up in relationships in different ways. And that can be, you know, good or bad. Absolutely. So how would you say, or 
off of the relationship things now mm -hmm. onto the well, it's still relationship, but onto the <laughs> the meat of this. I, I want mm -hmm. to talk to. So this show is all about uh, leveling up and being more er more than when it comes to things like video and live stream. Now, aside from the challenge of not being able to be there in person with the actors and the rest of the crew, what were some of the challenges you had in shooting a show remotely? And how did you be better doing it remotely? How were you able to overcome those challenges to be that much better in your production? Yeah. I love that. That is a great question. And I love that you make me think about that because everything about that process forced us all to become more like even with my actors, like generally an actor, they show up to set, they got hair and makeup waiting on them. They have, uh, all, you know, a sound person that connects their mic. They have all this, but you know, every person uh, involved with the production had to pretty much become all those things for themselves. And I had to pick up more roles than I normally would. Like, you know, I had to location scout within your house. Like, okay, well, where can we shoot this? And what needs to be do set design? But they had to physically like implement it. Like, okay, let's get rid of these pictures. You know, let's make it look more like a character and not like the home that you're existing in already. Um, and yeah, that was just, we all just had to just keep thinking of things. But the biggest thing for me as the writer is, how do I continue to tell a story that is for the most part going to have to involve people not being in the same space ever and, and people mm. don't get tired of watching it? Mm, mm. Well, I didn't. <laughs> I certainly Thank you. didn't. <laughs> Thank I, you. The, um, the, no, I, I really didn't. I, I felt Thank it was you. that engaging that, Thank you know, you me. want to come. Of course, I binge watched the entire first season. So I was yeah. like, okay, next. Okay, next. Yeah. Okay, next. And yeah. I start to get to season two. So, oh, I can't wait for you to. I, I, I can't wait. I can't it, wait. It definitely I, got more err. It definitely got oh, more really? as it went along. Really? Oh, gosh, okay. yes. So don't tell me. Don't tell me. I, I, I won't, but it's leaps and bounds. Like, yeah. Wait till oh, you wow. see it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. And, and I think that's the important thing here that you just put something out there. You took yes. a chance. You put yes. your, your and I, you've been doing things for years, for donkey's years, because yes. you've been in L.A. forever. But, you know, yes. putting putting this out there, it's about putting mm -hmm. it out there and then learning from what went well yes. or didn't go so well and yes. then leveling yes. up the next yes. time you do it. Yes. So I, I'm so glad to hear that. I'm so glad Thank to you. hear that. That That's what it has to be. You can't chase perfection or you can't wait on perfection. You know, you can you can thrive for perfection. I mean, obviously, we want to be our best, but don't wait for it. What can you do well? And you know what I mean? People will grow. Like, how many artists out here? You know, there's no such thing as perfect art. Um, it's all up to who, who receives it and how they receive it. Don't forget you emotionally broke. Settled in our knowledge and conversations.